Hello everyone. I'm blessed and honored to be on the forum today. And I want to appreciate you, uh, Reverend Betty King, for um, considering me as a speaker on this forum. Um, tell someone to tune in. Text someone and tell them to come. We are going to divulge into the word. We are going to have a moment of prayer. And we are going to seek the Lord's face. Hallelujah. Let's pray before we get into the word. Father, one more time, I come before you. And I present myself as a vessel willing to be used of you. I pray that if there be anything in me that is more of me, that I will decrease, Lord, even as you increase. Anoint my tongue like the pen of a ready writer for clarity of speech so that no one will leave this forum the same way they came. Hallelujah. We are going to be looking at Song of Solomon chapter 3. Song of Solomon chapter 3. The theme of this conference is Song of Solomon chapter 3 verse 2, but we will start reading from verse 1. By night on my bed, I sought the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise now, I said, and go about the city, in the streets, and in the squares, I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me. I said, have you seen the one I love? Scarcely had I passed by them when I found the one I love. I held him and would not let him go. And I till, until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. And I know those of you are, wonder, are watching and wondering, this is a love story of King Solomon and his lover, his handmaiden. And this is the story of the handmaiden. They are engaged to be married. And she is in her bed and she misses her lover. She desires to talk to her lover. And for those of you who have ever been in love, you must relate. You must understand what I'm talking about. She misses her lover. She can't sleep. She wants to hear his voice. She wants to take counsel from him. They are preparing for a wedding. She wants to see her lover. And she says, instead of staying in my bed and thinking about my lover, I decide to get up and seek him. And she says, I tossed around in bed. I turned. I looked for my lover in bed and I couldn't see him. And I decided I will go on the streets. I will arise and go on the streets and seek my lover so that I can find him. So that I can enjoy his fellowship. So that I can rejoice with him. And this is definitely before the wedding. But she is not so interested in the events. She's not more interested in the ceremony the way it is when we were young girls and we were about to get married. You are thinking about the dress you are going to wear. You are thinking about the, 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 the decoration, the flowers on your ceremony. And I remember in the time, the, 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 the time that we take to prepare for the wedding, very few of the young brides that are ambitious and want to look perfect will think of their lover. We are thinking of our bridesmaids. We are thinking what we are going to wear. But this is a young lady in her bed. And instead of the flashy ceremony, instead of the glamour of being married to a king, she is thinking of her lover. She is missing him. She is in love with him. And in the same way, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12, I have a holy jealousy, a divine jealousy of you because I have betrothed you to one husband and I am ready to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. As a church, we are betrothed to Jesus. We are betrothed to Christ. He is our lover. But how many of us will set aside the glamorous activity of serving him? How many of us will set aside the glamour of dancing and praising in church. How many of us will set aside the glamour of the benefits that come from serving him and say, we want to see him. We want to know our lover. We desire to have him. We desire to embrace him. Are we thinking of our lover? Or are we thinking of the glamour 
of being betrothed to him? Are we thinking of our lover? Or are we thinking of the benefits of being engaged to him? Are we thinking of our lover? Or are we thinking of what we might get on our wedding day, the presents, the gifts that we will get on our wedding day? This young lady gets out of her bed and she says, I'm missing my lover. I'm tossing and turning in my bed. Do you know that we can have Christ come into our beds and talk to us? The Bible says in Job chapter 3 verse 15 that he speaks to us in dreams, in visions of the night. Do you know that you can have your lover communicate with you even in the night? She's tossing and turning and she says, I can't find my lover. How many of, how many of us do that? This handmaiden is an example. This, this bride is an example. How can we be betrothed to a king? Because we are betrothed. She was betrothed to king, to king Solomon. How can we be betrothed to a king? The king of kings. And we, are, we have no excitement about the individual that we are betrothed to. And that is the church today. We have been taken up by the activity. We have been taken up by the glamour. We have been taken up by the palace. We have been taken up by the grandeur of being engaged to the king. The way people look at us and say, oh, those are the king's children. Look at how they sing. Those are the king's children. Look at how they dress. Those are the king's children. And we are in, ex so excited about that. We have not fellowshiped with our king. We have not missed him in our beds. We have not missed him in the night time. We, our hearts are not longing to feel the presence of the king of kings. But this young lady is a challenge. She says, I know that I'm betrothed to him. I know that I'm in betrothed to the greatest man on this earth, the wisest man on this earth. But that is not enough. It's not enough just to have a name. It's not enough just for people to know that you are his bride. You need fellowship. You need to be with him. It's not enough just to be married. You need to have the fellowship of your husband. It's not enough just to be called an end. But the church has become that bride that feels that it is enough to have the benefits of the palace without knowing him. How many times do we say, God, we want to seek you. We want to seek your face. We want to know what you want. We want to dialogue with you. We want to, for you to whisper to us the secrets that are hidden. We want you to show us the, wonder, the wondrous things. We want to, you to manifest what you would manifest tomorrow. How many times do we say, I slept tonight, but God didn't speak to me. I am missing his voice. I am missing his word how many of us say that no we are more interested in the glamour of the palace the provision of the palace what is the king going to get me what am i going to wear on my wedding day what am i going to look like when i come to meet the king we prepare to come to church more than we prepare to hear his voice we prepare for the events the festivities the conferences more than we prepare for what God is about to tell us. This young lady is a challenge. She says, I missed him even in the night. I thought I was uncomfortable. The church should get to a place where we are uncomfortable, not hearing the voice of our lover. We are betrothed to Christ. The church should get to a place where we are wondering, when will we see him? When will we touch him? When will we feel his presence? The church should get to a place where we are walking and moving with him, a place, a place of revival. She says, I missed him in my bed and I arose and decided to go and seek after my lover. If the church will arise and run after our lover, if the church will arise and run after Christ, if the church will arise and embrace him, amazingly, our king does not force his presence on us. And that's what I want us to look at today. He doesn't force his presence on us. He wants us to seek him. He desires that we seek him. He has promised in his word that if we will seek him, we will find him. If we knock, the door will be opened to us. It's amazing. After a man loves you, after he engages you, after he calls you his bride, and you are, you, you, you are so interested in the benefits of being called his name, in the benefits of being in the palace of the king, in the benefits of what is going to be at the wedding ceremony. And every time this man wants to see you, you are busy. You're preparing dresses. You're asking for money. You're asking him to send money for shoes for the ceremony. The groom will wonder, does this woman really love me? 
But if you're preparing for a ceremony and you wake up one morning and you say, honey, I came. I want to surprise you. I was missing you. You are building the relationship that you have, even if you are betrothed. Our God does not force his attention on us. Our king will never force his attention on us. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to find him. He wants us to seek his face. He wants us to open our ears so that we can hear from him. We have sought the benefits of the kingdom. But Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You are the bride. Because every lover wants to be sought continually. Every lover wants a response when they go. And our King Jesus Christ is saying, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to call on me. I'm waiting for you to seek me. I'm your lover. Where are your calls? How come you never call me? You are enjoying my benefits. I'm your King. You are living in my palace. I give you food every day. I clothe you. You look beautiful. You, you, you have been titled. As my queen. But there is no communication in our relationship. This young lady said, when I did not see him, when I did not feel him in my bed, I arose. And this is where the main script for today is. She says, I will rise now, I said, and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. She decides to leave the comfort of her bed and she goes through the city. She goes through op maximum effort just to find the fellowship of her lover. She goes through cities. She goes through streets just to find the fellowship, just to find the communication. Many of us, 
after COVID-19 have learned to have church at home. We don't want to get out of the comfort of our beds. But sometimes you feel you need the fellowship. Sometimes you feel you just need to be closer to worship. Sometimes you feel you need to be where you are sure there is no confusion, where you are sure there will be no interruption, where you are sure you are in the presence of God. And then you think of the inconvenience of driving to church. But she says, I, I will go into the streets. I will go into the squares. I will seek my love. I will do, go. I will, I will do what I need to do to be near my lover. To be near the one that I'm betrothed to. To be near my king. I will go to all ends across the earth to be near my king. I have an adopted son and he got married a short time after the COVID lockdown. His bride was in Australia. And at that time, her parents were not sure whether she should marry this Ugandan boy. And they were not really in support of her. But she took a step. There were no planes that would come into Uganda. We were in total lockdown. She flew to Kenya. And then she came through the border by bus, going through maximum effort to meet her lover. And I did his wedding. But they read their oaths as I was doing the wedding. And she said, I will love you to the, till the end of time. And this is even, has even been exemplified by the fact that I went through thick and thin just to get to you. If we can do this for a human being, what about our lover, the king? What about the king of kings? What about the Lord of hosts? We all go through pain, through trouble to end up with the people we love, to marry the people we love. My own love story was not simple. It was not easy. I remember I had just graduated from the university. My, this church didn't exist. My husband was serving God in a papyrus reed shelter. With a we, you know, with, we did not have the congregation we have today. Neither the name. And I said to my parents, this is the man I love. I'm going to marry him regardless. And they were worried. What are you going to do? How are you going to support the family? Are you going to get yourself a job? But I did not think about that. I went through thick and thin to end up with my lover. But Christ is our lover. Paul says we have been betrothed to Christ. And he wants to present us to him. We are engaged to the king of kings. But what do we do? What steps do we go through to connect to our lover? How much pain do we consider inconveniences? We can't consider an inconvenience if we are in love. You can't even think about it. She said, I went through the streets. I went through the squares just to meet up with the one I love. I asked people where he was and I did not found, find him, but I continued looking for him. Christ is our king. We cannot run after only the benefits. If I had said to my husband, you know what, I don't want the inconvenience, and inconvenience of marrying you, but I want your name. I don't want to go through the dust and be raised slowly. I just want your name. I don't think he would have taken me as a wife. I don't think he would have trusted me. The lady says, I sacrificed. I went through the streets. I went through the squares. I will seek the one I love at all costs. Has the church got into that? Are we seeking the one we love at all costs? Serving God is sacrificial. Ending up with him is sacrificial. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17 says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Our king, our groom is not about to force himself on us. That would be rape. He will not run after you. He wants you to come and seek him. Because he gave his life for you. And he loved you before you loved him. But it cannot be a one man show all the time. He says, seek me, you will find me. He says, I love those who show me they love me. 
and those who seek me diligently. This is what we should do. And it is what we should continue doing. Our God, our King, Christ, does not force himself on us. Neither does he force he himself. Neither does he force us to do what is right. He will always ask us to choose. Deuteronomy 28, he says, I give you a choice to choose between life and death. And he says, choose life. Now he's saying, seek me, but I will not arrest you. I will not force you to come and look for me. But I am your groom. Give me some attention. I love those who love me. And I love those who seek me diligently. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He is a lover that wants to be sought with all our hearts. The Bible says our God is a jealous God. He does not want to share us with any other lovers. He wants total commitment. What is it in your life that you are sharing with God? What are you giving more time than God? He says, if only you can seek me with all your heart. I want to see that your heart is not anywhere else. Maybe you have been trying to seek him and you say, I never hear him talk to me. I don't hear the Holy Spirit um, uh, whisper. I don't know what's going on. I'm never given direction. Maybe you have, un you have divided attention. Maybe you have divided attention. But he says, seek me with all your heart and you will find me. This girl, this young maiden, goes through the streets at all costs to find her lover. I pray that the church will arise and get to a point where we can stand up and go and meet our lover and embrace him like this young lady did. Because our lover has already betrothed us. He died for us. He died because he loved us. And now he wants to see us share the same love. And when we do, he says, if you seek the first the kingdom of God, when you seek me first, when you show me that I am your husband, when you show me you are betrothed to me, then I will give you everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Hall hallelujah. Psalm chapter 9 verse 10 says, O Lord, you have not forsaken those who seek you. Which lover will forsake a lady who is running after him, head over heels in love with him? Which lover will forsake a lady who says, I came all the way, even in quarantine, I flew halfway and I, 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 I drove halfway and my parents were against it. Which lover will forsake a woman like that. And he says, I do not forsake those who seek me. If you are running after him at all costs, at your inconvenience, he says he will never forsake those who seek him. I pray that after today, the church will arise and we will go and seek our lover. And we will yearn to hear his voice. And we will yearn to fall in his presence. And we will yearn to feel his touch. And we will yearn to get direction from him. I pray that this time we will, the church will wake up and come to God, not just to ask. Come to our lover, the king of kings, not just to demand, but to praise him, to order him. When you are in love with someone, you tell them they are beautiful. You tell them they are smart. You tell them they are handsome. He says, I do not forsake those who seek me. It is a promise. If you wake up every day to adore him, if you wake up every day to love him, if you wake up every day to whisper endearments to your lover, he says, I will not forsake you. I will not forsake you. That is a promise. It is sure. So many times we are running after the benefits of our lovers and we are not running after them. And, and in this day and age, it is called gold digging. When every time you meet your lover, you're asking, I want money for my hair. I want money for a dress. I want money. And that is who we have become. We are already in the palace. 
Let's seek the king's favor. Vashti was in the palace and she forgot the king. She made herself a party on the side, enjoying the benefits of the king. And when King Ahasuerus called to her, she said, I'm too busy, king. I cannot come. Instead of seeking the favor of the king, she was seeking the favor of a small group of people in the palace. And she lost the benefits of the palace. She was merrymaking, drinking the wine in the palace, and she forgot to heed to the king. This is what the church has done. We have forgotten to heed to the king of kings. We have forgotten to heed to the Lord of lords. And he's calling us. He wants to be sought. He wants to be found. He said, I could come, but I can't run after you. This is a love relationship. You are betrothed to me. Come. Seek me and you will find me. Knock and the door will be open unto you. This young lady asks people about her lover. She says, have you seen him? I want to see him. She's looking for testimonies. In her spare time, she's looking for people who have met her lover. What they think of him. What a yielding relationship. What a loving woman. What a beautiful relationship. But this is what Christ loves. This is, this is what Christ requires of us. We are the church and we are betrothed to him and he is our king. He is our lover. And he wants us to walk an extra mile with him. But every time we meet him, give me this, give me that, protect me. And he says, where is the relationship? When do they ever love me? When do they ever come to me? When do they ever seek me? I encourage you tonight to seek his face, to hear his voice, to adore him, to praise him, to tell him you love him, to worship him. How many times do we worship? Or do we just come into the presence to demand, to pray, to sweat? This young lady is seeking her lover. She's seeking the one she loves. And as I come to an end, the Bible says in verse 4, Scarcely had I passed by them when I found the one I love. As soon as you begin seeking wholeheartedly, it will not take you a year. It will not take you a month. It will not take you a day. It will not take you an hour to find your lover. If you decide to seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, it will not take you an instance to find him. She wakes up, goes into the streets, asks people, and no sooner has she asked him, them, she finds him. And she says, when I found the one I love, I held him and would not let him go. Until I had brought him to the house of my mother and, and into the chamber of her who conceived me. She wants to introduce her groom to her mother. But she says, I have found you and I will never let, let, I will never let you go. Paul says, what can separate us from the love of Christ? What can separate us from this relationship with him? Is it trouble? Is it hardship? Is it persecution? He says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Once we find him, once we find his relationship, once we embrace him, let us cling on to him. When you are in trouble, let him remain your lover. When you lose someone, let him remain your lover. When you are ridiculed, when you are in pain, when you are hurt, let him be your lover. She said, when I found him, I embraced him, I held on to him, and I refused to let him go. What we have is a perfect match. Our lover is perfect. He has no flaws, and everyone would want to be engaged to someone like that. Today, as we come to an end, we are going to pray that we will learn to see our king. We know him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We know him as Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We know him as Jehovah Yahweh, the ever-present God. We know him as the everlasting Father. We know him as Jehovah Shalom, peace. But do we know him as our husband? Do we know him as our husband? Do we know him as our lover? As we come to an end today, 
we are going to pray that we will discover Christ as our lover. There is very little time left. Isaiah 55 verse 6 to 7 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Do you know that the more you ignore a lover, the more wary they grow of you. One day the lover will walk away and find another one. He says, if he's still interested in you, seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. He says, seek him while he will be found. There is little time. The more you ignore him, the more interested he will get in someone else. Let's seek him. Let's pay back the attention. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we come to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask you to have mercy on us. The word of God says the son of man has power to forgive all sins. And Father, though our sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be as red as crimson, they shall be as white as wool. Have mercy on us and cleanse us. We have sought the benefits of the palace because we are betrothed to a king. We have demanded from the palace. We have utilized the palace utilities. We have prayed on the, the provisions of our maker, of our husband, who is the king of kings. But we have forgotten our lover who is the king. And today, oh God, we come back to you. We are returning to our first love. Like the prodigal son, wearied of spending his father's money without a relationship and came back to live with his father. So we are coming back to you today. We want to live with you. We want to hear your voice. We want to feel your embrace. We want to know your touch. We want to be next to your body. We want to feel you even in the night because you are our lover. Father, we pray that with anything that has caused divided attention, that has caused us not to seek you with all our heart, we pray tonight in the mighty name of Jesus that you will remove every distraction so that we will hold on to you and come back and seek you with all our hearts. And Father, we pray that even after we have found you, we will embrace you and not let any distraction pull us away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And if you are, you are watching and you do not know this lover, you do not know this king, you do not know our Lord, and you say, men have dis disappointed me, my wife has disappointed me, my husband has disappointed me, my boyfriend threw me out, I want that lover. I want the perfect lover. I want a lover that is a king, the king of kings. Solomon was a king and his, love, uh, the, his, his betrothed virgin was looking for him. But we are engaged to the king of kings. If you want that relationship, repeat this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I realize that you so loved the world that you sent your only begotten son so that whosoever believed in him will not perish but will have eternal life. I pray tonight, O oh God, that I will come into your life and I will be that lover. I pray and I declare that I am being betrothed to you at this very moment and I declare that I will seek you continually. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prayed. Amen and amen. One more time. I want to thank you all for tuning in. God bless you. I appreciate you, Reverend King. I'm blessed that I'm part of this forum. And see you soon. Bye-bye.